So now that we have the concept of an average time average velocity profile, we can have conversations like, okay, what is the what is the velocity profile for turbulent flow in a pipe? So if you have turbulent flow in a pipe, we know that it's going to be swirling and churning. But what on average is happening in a time average sense? So we're going to uh, one way that there are many models for this. Again, lots of different empirical relationships, but one model that's fairly easy to understand and works reasonably well is what's the pop is what's called the power law profile. So the power law profile is just one of many models one can use to try to model this relationship between the time average velocity and the time average maximum velocity in the pipe. Now, of course, the time average maximum velocity may not be the actual maximum velocity in the pipe because there's turbulent swirling. So some you know, temporary forward swirl could cause the, the, uh, the velocity to be even larger than the max, but this is the time average maximum. The other thing to make sure you understand and keep firmly in your head is this average here is the time average. It's not the average velocity in the pipe. For the average velocity in the pipe, we've been using U bar which is this thing, and that's a spatial average. That's the average velocity, you know, as you average it across the pipe area. This is the time average. So at every location in the pipe, there is a velocity that is fluctuating all the time because of turbulence. But on average, it may have it has a value. So that's what we're trying to figure out. What is the average value at a location uh, relative to the coordinate y here, where y is measured? from the distance from the pipe wall relative to the outer radius. How is that related to the maximum velocity? Obviously, when y is equal to zero and we're on the wall, the average time average velocity is zero because we still have the no slip condition even when we have turbulent flow. So we have no slip on the wall, but when we're away from the wall, the average velocity is going to increase. And the question is, how is that going? To, what, what does that look like? Is it going to be parabolic? We saw that it was parabolic for laminar flow. Maybe it's going to be the same. Of course, it turns out it's not. Um, but how does it compare to that parabolic profile? So here's one formula that gives you that, and it's 1 over n. Uh, that's the power that you raise y over r naught to to get this ratio. So in order to do that, you need n, and the n value here is determined by the friction factor. Now this friction factor is what we get from the Moody diagram. So what we're going to have to do to get this is we're going to have to look up the friction factor. That gives us an n, and that allows us to calculate the profile of the average velocity compared to the maximum velocity. N varies in pipe flow from 5 to 10. So you, if you get a number that's not between 5 and 10, you almost certainly made a mistake. All right, now I want to go ahead and do the calculation to relate U max to U. So this is going to take some integrating. So we're going to try to relate U max to U, just as we did with uh, laminar flow. If you look back at laminar flow, we're able to find a relationship between the maximum velocity and the uh, right and the velocity um, in the pipe uh, the average velocity sorry to the average velocity so we're going to relate max u max to the average velocity here not to the time average velocity but to the to the spatially average velocity so we're looking for the time averaged u max relative to the spatially average u bar because this will allow us to get things like flow rates and mass flow rates and volumetric flow rates. So we want to know how U max, the maximum average time average velocity, compares to the average flow rate in space. So we know that U bar is defined as 1 pi r naught squared, that's the area of the pipe, divided by the integral from 0 to r naught of the time average velocity times 2 pi r dr. So this is our time average velocity being integrated over the entire pipe. We know that this u here is a function of r, so we have to, we have to use that function in order to make take this integral. We know what that function is because we just uh, saw it on the prior page, so we'll just plug that in. So we have u bar, the, the spatially averaged velocity, r naught squared, is 0 to r naught of now we're going to plug in for the, uh, the time average velocity as a function of r. So that's y over r naught, 1 over n, 2 pi r dr. So there's my 
There's my formula. Now this isn't in terms of r yet, it's in terms of y. So I need to relate y to r. y is equal to r naught minus r. Think about that for a minute. That's how far away I am from the pipe wall. So I plug that in for my y. And I get that the average velocity in the pipe, r naught squared, u over r naught, of the time average maximum velocity, times y, I'm sorry, r naught minus r over r naught, all raised to the one over nth power, two pi r dr. So that's my, that's my integral. And I can take this integral, it turns out. Now the pi's just cancel, so I can, I can cancel that and cancel that pi's constant, so I can come out of the integral and cancel that other thing. Um, what else can come out? Well, actually, u tilde max can come out, because u tilde max is time average maximum. It's not a function of space. Uh, it's, the, it's the time average maximum in the flow, so that can come out as well. So I've got the, the average velocity is, and I can pull that 2 out, 2u tilde max divided by r naught squared times this integral, 0 to r naught, r naught minus r over r naught, 1 over n r dr. All right, so I'm hoping I know how to take this integral. I do know how to take that integral. Uh, that's integration by parts. How do I know it's integration by parts? It's integration by parts because um, I can make this r go away using integration by parts. That's usually when you want to use integration by parts, when you have one term that is just an r or an r squared. And if you do integration by parts, you can make it disappear. So I'm going to turn that into the part that goes away. So I'm going to recall my uh, integration by parts formula. I'm going to just focus on the integral now. So I'm going to just integrate that. So I've got uh, 0 to r naught of r naught minus r over r naught, all raised to 1 over n power, r dr. That's the integral I'm trying to do. I'm going to use the uh, integration by parts formula, which I'm reminding you of here, uv minus v du. So the integral of u dv equals uv minus v du. So whatever I, whatever I turn u into, it's going to turn into du. So I'm going to make u equal to r, and then du will become just dr. So that basically got rid of that r. And that's the whole point of integration by parts usually, and it is in this case. Uh, and then the d, that means my dv is what's ever left. So my dv is r naught minus r over r naught, 1 over n power, dr which means that v is the integral of this thing. The integral of that thing, it's actually not a hard integral to take. I just take this whole thing, add 1 to this exponent. So that's going to be r naught minus r over r naught. And that's going to be, uh, let's see, n plus 1 over n. That's adding 1 to this exponent, so I'd have 1 plus 1 over n would be my exponent there. But because I did that, I have to multiply this by n over n plus 1, and I have to multiply a negative 1 over r naught. So, sorry, negative r naught. So, negative r naught. Because that's what my r is being multiplied by, and here is being multiplied by a negative 1 over r naught. So, if I were to take the derivative of this whole thing, um, I would get back this. Thing. So that's what I want. That's what I want to have happen is whenever you take an integral, you take the derivative, you get back to this. Um, so that's what I'm doing there. So those are my pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and put all of that into this formula. So I have that this integral here from 0 to r naught of r naught minus r over r naught to the 1 over n power r dr is equal to u times v. So that's r times v, which is r naught minus r over r naught n plus 1 over n times n over n plus 1 times negative r naught. So that's u and v. That's u and this is v. Minus, it says, the integral, 0 to r naught, of course. This is all evaluated at 0 to r naught as well. Uh, minus this grouping, v. Well, v has a minus sign in it, so I'm going to go ahead and just turn this into a plus coming from there. So that's going to be plus uh, r naught n over n plus 1, then r naught minus r over r naught to the n plus 1 over n now, 
And then that's times du. Well, du is just dr, so that's easy. So that's that, I think. Um, and then I have to take this integral. So that's not too hard, because I just it's just like the other one. So I've got r, r naught minus r over r naught times n plus, I mean, to the n plus 1 over n times n over n plus 1, and that's times minus r naught. And then this term is now plus, but I'm integrating this. So this is now going to go to r naught minus r over r naught to the 2n plus 1 over n. That's another adding another, another uh, you know, 1 to that exponent. Then I have to, because I did that, I have to multiply by n over 2n plus 1, because that's the inverse of that exponent. And I have, to, I still have my minus r over r naught there, so I have to have my, I have to have negative r naught again here, and that's multiplying this guy. So it's multiplying r naught and n over n plus one. So that's my integral, but that's all evaluated at zero and r naught. All right. So it looks kind of ugly, but it's actually going to come out pretty nicely. Um, so we've got we plug in r naught here, this term goes to zero because r naught minus r naught is zero. And this term goes to zero because r naught minus r naught is zero. So both terms go to zero when I plug in r naught. So this is, starts out with a big fat zero. So that was pretty easy. And when I plug in, then I said minus when I evaluated it at zero. When I evaluate this at zero, well, that's zero right there. That's an r. It's going to go to zero. So that whole first term is still zero. And then I have minus... The second term does not go to zero, otherwise this would be super boring. So the second term uh, is not going to go to zero, but it does have a negative sign in it, but it's minus. So it's minus a minus again, so that's going to be a plus. So I have a plus, and then when r, this r is zero, I have r naught over r naught. So I have r naught over r naught to the 2n plus 1 over n. Uh, and then I have n over 2n plus 1, and I have r naught squared and I have n over n plus one. So those are my three terms. This, of course, is r naught over r naught to a raised to a power, that's just one raised to a power is still one. So this whole thing is just equal to r naught squared times n squared over two n plus one times n plus one. All right, that's what that grouping equals. That's what my integral equals. So this integral equals that. So now I go back and plug that in. I had that I had to multiply that integral by 2u max r naught over r naught squared. So my u bar, putting this where you can see both, I guess, briefly here. U bar, my average velocity is 2 time average maximum velocity divided by r naught squared times this r naught squared n squared over 2n plus 1 times n plus 1. These r naughts cancel. So my actual average velocity is 2 times the time average maximum velocity times n squared over 2n plus 1 times n plus 1. Alright, that's it. So that allows me to relate my average velocity here to my time average maximum velocity. So we'll compare next thing, next next structure. We'll kind of figure out what those what that means in terms of velocity profiles for turbulent flow.